Hello everybody. I am here today because I was inspired to be a part of a collaboration I came across. Anne from What's Up Farm. And anyway, she is hosting a collaboration. Each week there's a set of people that are doing um, Make It Yourself May. So like I've seen homemade brownie mix or oatmeal cream pie, or I think I even saw maybe a soap video. So anyway, I thought, okay, I'm gonna make something too. And one of the things that I was going to do was already taken, so I thought, that's okay, I'll come up with something different. And I haven't made pasta in a really long time. We're starting to get lots of eggs now, so I'm gonna take you along and we're gonna make it ourselves pasta. So I'm going to use one of my KitchenAid attachments, but if you want to just use your hands and a knife or a pizza cutter, you could make egg noodles that way too. But I'm going to follow the basic egg pasta dough recipe that comes with the KitchenAid. And um, there are so many out there that you can find, but I thought since I'm using this attachment, I like to use the recipe that they suggest. So let's get started. First things first, let's go ahead and get some flour in here in the machine. It's just a regular all-purpose flour. Start out with three cups. There we go. I'm not a super precise cook. If you want to be precise, you can actually pour the flour into the cup and then level it off with a butter knife. But you know, with this, it's kind of for feel, and if it gets a little dry, you add a little water, and if it's too wet, you add a little more flour. It's forgiving. Then we're gonna need some, they call for kosher salt, so I'm just using my pink Himalayan sea salt. I love that stuff, it's wonderful. And we just need a fourth of a teaspoon. Boop! Also calls for two large eggs. Go ahead and crack those, and I kind of beat them up a little bit, so we'll go ahead and put those in there. I use whatever day eggs I have available that day. It could be chicken eggs, it could be turkey eggs, it could be duck eggs. They all work great. You will take note that some will have more of the white albium, and so you may have to adjust your flour like we talked about earlier, adding a little bit of water and stuff to that. I'm gonna start out with just the regular paddle to get it good and mixed. We may move to the dough hook later. I have it here just in case. It also calls for a tablespoon of olive oil. Well, I'm out, so we're just gonna use vegetable today. And that's okay, that's one thing about home cooking that we need to remember. You can substitute a lot of things. It doesn't have to be exact. I love this little gadget. It's from Pampered Chef. I'm not affiliated with them. I just thought you might wanna know. I think I got it on Amazon actually. But we're gonna go ahead and get this going. Ooh, a too high. Let that go and we get some water to have. Bring it a little closer here. So you can see what's going on. That is way too dry. So I'm gonna start adding some water in here. What I did is I just rinsed the bowl that the eggs were in. There it's starting to come together a little bit. I just love that yellow color you get from farm fresh eggs. may have hit our sweet spot. I'm gonna go ahead and let this mix in the mixer for just a couple minutes maybe, and then I'm gonna bring it out and we'll hand mix it for a little bit too. We'll knead it with our hands. Okay, so I knew we were done when my mixer got angry. I'll go ahead and turn it on so you can hear. See that different sound? It's struggling, it's done. I do love my KitchenAid mixer, but I will tell you, that sometimes you have to go ahead and finish kneading 
your doughs, especially a thick dough like this, with your hands. And you know what, that's okay. You don't even need a mixer anyways. This looks like it's gonna be a nice, soft, supple dough. So we're just gonna kinda fold and push to knead the dough. I'll do this for maybe two minutes. I never did end up using the dough hook. You wanna see? Isn't it beautiful? Nice, soft dough. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let it rest. I'm gonna pull out my plastic wrap, cover it up, leave it out on the counter for at least 30 minutes just to rest. I'm gonna go eat my breakfast and I'll be back. I'm back. So that was a good breakfast, I know. How rude of me, I didn't even share with you. So I've cleaned up and I've come back down. I thought you'd want to see me put this gadget together. So this is the first pasta attachment that I got for my KitchenAid. I like my KitchenAid, it's so cool. And it is really neat. It has all these different little attachments you can use. This is the large macaroni. And that's what we're gonna do today because my family, my husband absolutely loves um, goulash and we're macaroni and cheese eaters too. So I figured that we could use it for one of those. I don't know that I'll take you along for making that this time, but maybe stay tuned to the channel and I will bring you a different video. It has this handy dandy little tightener to make sure I've got another nice and tight. And then you just take this part here and you put it in the top of your mixer. Let's see if I can turn it so you can see this little black knob. You tighten it down. Voila! That's it. Has a nice little blade slicer. This comes in super handy. I'm going to move this out of the way. And let's prep the counter a little bit. I've got a little, I want to put a little flour on. Just so it won't stick. These are clean counters. But pasta will sometimes get a bit sticky. And so if we have a little bit of flour here first, we can roll it in that one. Makes it easier. All right, so with this particular attachment, you need to roll your pasta dough into walnut sized pieces. I'm gonna go grab a dough scraper. That's gonna work so much better. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of chop this, cut this into 10 pieces, and that should be about right. I'm just gonna kind of quickly roll them into balls. So they'll go down into the extruder. All right, I'm gonna turn this probably on four. It's loud, I know. You can actually use this in here to push it down. You have to be patient. And I need to put some more dough in there. Here we go. Macaroni noodles. And you just kind of let the machine do the work. And I throw it on my floured surface and we'll let it dry. How cool is this? Awesome. Am I just a little proud? Yeah, I am. This is fun. The big trick to this is just to be patient and you don't want to handle the, the pasta too much after you cut it off because then you squish it and you don't have those air holes anymore so you just want to kind of gently move it 
that's really all there is to it. You can make it as long or as short as you choose. Okay, I'm gonna continue this back for just a minute. One other trick is that while you're waiting on these, you want to go ahead and keep the other dough balls covered with your plastic wrap so that they don't dry out. Okay, we're at the end, last match. You, oops. A few tips I learned about this was do not shove the pasta in too much at once. It actually clogs it up and makes it go slower. The next thing I learned was you can turn up the speed as long as you do that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this. Well, it might be easier to take this part off. while it's still on the stand. There will be a little bit of dough left in here. I let it run while I was cleaning up and doing some dishes. But I mean, that's it. I could have maybe squeezed out a couple more. I will let, I will go wash these later. You're actually supposed to just kind of separate it and let it air dry. And then the pasta that you don't get off now can just be brushed off and then you wash them later. You know, waste not, want not kind of gal. I use every little bit of everything. So I'm going to kind of clean this up the best I can. That dry pasta will just pop right out of there. But I'm going to go ahead and just roll this out. Now it won't have the hollow like that pasta will, but if I roll it thinner, it should cook about the same time. And I can throw this in my pasta salad, macaroni, goulash, stroganoff, whatever I choose to make with it. Put it here, I'll come along, I'll cut it into smaller pieces. And you could do this with the whole batch of dough if you wanted to. Bring it a little closer. Show you what we got. Whoops. I'm gonna take a clean towel. They're flour sack towels. And so they're thin, things can air out and they don't leave little fuzzies. So I'm gonna let this just dry all day while I go about my business, cause I've got lots to do today. I'm not sure if we'll end the video here or not, but if we do, I just want to say thanks again, Anne, for inviting anyone to join in on your really neat collaboration. I actually have another one coming up with her in June. I won't tell you about it yet, but that's how I met her was through this future collaboration that I was invited to be a part of. So I may or may not see you. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe because you're going to want to know what I do with this pasta. I'm going to try my best to remember to bring you along when I do that recipe too. See ya. Okay, so I came, oh, afternoon and I just kind of fluffed them up a little bit. Let them, you know, get all the sides exposed. There was flour on the counter, and so it picked that up. And you can hear they could be cooked right now, but I'm going to go ahead and let them dry longer for a bit more storage than just today.